Malachi, whose teachings have resonated across the centuries, stands as a pivotal figure in the Hebrew scriptures, being the last of the Old Testament prophets. His name, meaning my messenger, reflects his prophetic mission and direct relationship with God, who called him to deliver messages of warning and hope to the people of Israel. Malachi lived during a turbulent period in Israel's history, around 450 to 400 BC, when the people faced significant spiritual and social challenges. This era followed their recent return from Babylonian exile, and the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem had initially sparked enthusiasm and hope among the Israelites. However, this fervor soon faded, replaced by a troubling apathy and deep-seated doubt, especially among the priests, who were supposed to be the guardians of faith and law. Following the exile, the Jewish community encountered numerous hardships. Political oppression and the influence of foreign powers like Greece brought uncertainty and fear. The initial excitement for the temple's restoration and the revival of religious practices quickly gave way to a disheartening reality marked by disillusionment and indifference. Hopes for a spiritual revival were hindered by negligence and a lack of zeal from both religious leaders and the general populace. The priests, who should have been models of faith and devotion, often became symbols of corruption and apathy. Instead of guiding the people according to divine laws, many priests neglected their sacred responsibilities, offering impure sacrifices and disregarding the instructions in the Torah. This lack of reverence and commitment was evident not only in religious practices, but also in the morals and ethics of society as a whole. Disillusioned, the people began to question God's love and justice, leading to a state of unbelief and discouragement. When Malachi was called to prophesy, he did not hesitate to raise his voice against this spiritual indifference. His message was clear and direct. He called on the people and priests to re-evaluate their relationship with God. Malachi not only denounced improper practices, but also reminded the people that God was still present, that his love and justice remained unchanged. Through his words, he emphasized the importance of pure offerings, faithfulness to the covenants with God, and the need for genuine repentance. Despite his efforts, however, Malachi faced significant resistance, the people were so entangled in their apathy that they often challenged the prophet's warnings, questioning the validity of his messages. This struggle between the hope for spiritual restoration and the harsh reality of disbelief created a context of tension and challenge that permeated his mission. In his prophetic mission, Malachi confronted this reality. He not only denounced the lack of zeal in sacrifices and offerings, but also questioned the depth of love and honor the people owed to God. He issued a powerful challenge. If I am a father, where is my honor? Malachi 1.6 This question was not merely rhetorical. It sought to provoke deep reflection on the filial relationship God established with his people. Honor, in a familial context, involves respect, reverence, and a recognition of authority and love. By using this metaphor, Malachi underscored that the relationship with God should be marked by an acknowledgement of His greatness and an appropriate response to His paternal love. Malachi's call was clear. He was not merely asking the people to bring tithes and offerings again, but to return to an authentic and meaningful relationship with God. This required acknowledgement of their failings and a willingness to change. Repentance, in this context, was not a mere formality, but a genuine transformation of the heart. Malachi urged the people to examine not only their outward practices, but also their internal attitudes. He highlighted the need to restore spiritual integrity that had been compromised by apathy and neglect. This call to repentance remains profoundly relevant in contemporary spirituality. Often, individuals and religious communities find themselves trapped in empty religious routines where attending services and performing rituals become obligations rather than expressions of a living and dynamic relationship with God. 
Malachi's question confronts us today. Are we honoring God in our daily lives? Are our acts of worship accompanied by a sincere acknowledgement of who God is and what He has done for us? Genuine repentance involves recognizing the areas where we have drifted from God, where indifference and daily routines have dulled our perception of His holiness and greatness. As we encounter this message, we are challenged to seek a spiritual renewal that goes beyond appearances, to live in a way that aligns our actions and hearts with God's will. The situation of the priests during Malachi's time is one of the most critical and alarming aspects of the message he brought to Israel. At the time of Malachi's prophecy, the priestly leadership, meant to exemplify faith, devotion and integrity, had become a symbol of corruption and dishonor. These religious leaders, instead of guiding the people with purity and zeal, became complicit in practices that compromised the holiness of worship. Priestly corruption manifested in several ways, but one of the most blatant was the offering of impure sacrifices. According to the law of Moses, offerings to God were to be from animals without defect, chosen with utmost care and respect. However, priests were allowing blind, lame, and sick animals to be offered at the altar, disregarding the divine guidelines set forth in Deuteronomy and Leviticus. This practice not only reflected a lack of respect for God's holiness, but also a severe negligence in fulfilling their priestly duties. By accepting such offerings, the priests bore responsibility for profaning the altar and the name of God, who deserved reverence and honor. In his indignation, Malachi does not hesitate to call out this hypocrisy. He uses a powerful argument to expose the priest's lack of integrity, asking if they would be content to offer such sacrifices to their governors. The logic is clear. If a human governor would reject inferior offerings, why should God accept them? This comparison reveals a profound misunderstanding of God's character and the expectations He has for His people. Through His words, Malachi highlights that the priests were treating sacred things with disdain, offering God leftovers and what was contemptible when they should have been offering their best. The consequences of this negligence and dishonor were severe. Malachi declares, Cursed is the cheat who has an acceptable male in his flock and vows to give it, but then sacrifices a blemished animal to the Lord. Malachi 1.14 This statement is not just a warning. It affirms that corruption, even among spiritual leaders, will not go unnoticed. The word cursed signifies that those who act deceitfully and dishonestly in their religious practices are under divine condemnation. Malachi's intention is clear. He aims to restore the people's and priests' awareness of the importance of purity in offerings and worship to God. This situation brings not only spiritual consequences, but also social ones. Dishonesty and corruption in religious leadership lead to a weakening of communal faith. When the people see that their leaders do not uphold the standards God established, they become discouraged and apathetic. Thus, the priest's failure affects not only their own spirituality, but also taints the entire community, creating a cycle of disobedience and disregard for God. With a direct and clear call, he says, Remember the law of Moses, Malachi 4.4, an exhortation that underscores Israel's need to return to their spiritual roots and recall the principles God established. This call is not merely a reminder of rules and regulations to follow, but a summons for the people to recognize the vital role the law plays in their relationship with God. The law of Moses, with its comprehensive instructions on worship, morality and justice, was given to Israel as a guide to live in fellowship with God and one another. By recalling the law, Malachi is not merely referencing a set of rules, he is calling the people to reflect on the covenant they made with God, which grounds their identity as his chosen nation. This law was not intended to be a burden, but rather a divine gift that provided protection, direction, and a clear path to a life of blessings.
The connection between the law and grace is a crucial aspect of Malachi's message. Though the people may have strayed from obedience and respect for the law, God continues to extend His grace and mercy. The law serves as a mirror, reflecting the need for repentance and the urgency of returning to God. By turning back to the law, the Israelites could once again experience God's grace in their lives as obedience to the law is an expression of faith and trust in God's promises. The relationship between obedience to the law and God's promises is inseparable. When the people follow God's commands, they not only demonstrate loyalty, but also position themselves to receive the blessings He has promised. The implications of this faithfulness to the law are deep and far-reaching. Obedience to the law of Moses not only sustains the spiritual life of the people, but also shapes the culture and society in which they live. When divine standards are upheld, justice and integrity prevail in social relations, promoting harmony and peace among individuals. The law was given to guide human interactions, and by following it, Israel could experience true fellowship with God and with one another, a lack of faithfulness to the law results in moral decay, injustice and oppression, while commitment to it brings spiritual and social renewal. Between the promises of judgment and the call to repentance, Malachi presents a significant prophecy that lights up the horizon of Israel's history, the coming of a messenger who will prepare the way for the Lord. He boldly declares, I will send my messenger, Malachi 3.1. This declaration is not merely a promise of redemption, but an affirmation of God's continuing love for His people, even in the face of their unfaithfulness. The figure of this messenger is central to the prophecy, and the expectation it generates among the people is palpable. For the Israelites, who awaited the coming of the Messiah with hope, the promise of a forerunner brought anticipation and a call to readiness. The people lived in a state of expectation, dreaming of a time when God would restore His covenant and bring salvation. The messenger, announced by Malachi, would not simply be a spokesperson, but a divine agent preparing hearts for the manifestation of God Himself in human form. This prophetic figure is often interpreted as a reference to John the Baptist, who would play a crucial role in ushering in the ministry of Jesus. Indeed, John the Baptist emerged as a powerful prophet, preparing the way for the Lord with a message of repentance and baptism. His fervent preaching and austere life drew crowds, calling people to turn to God and prepare their hearts for the coming Messiah. He did not hesitate to point to Jesus, declaring, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1.29 Thus, Malachi's promise was fulfilled magnificently, demonstrating God's faithfulness in keeping His promises and the unfolding of the divine plan of salvation. The anticipation surrounding the coming of the Messiah held profound significance for the people. They longed for a deliverer who would not only save them from external oppressions, but also bring a new understanding of justice and righteousness. Prophecies accumulated over the centuries spoke of a king who would establish his kingdom with power and authority, a Messiah who would restore Israel and bring peace. Malachi, in mentioning the messenger who would come before the Lord, was reigniting this hope that had waned in the face of adversity. This hope extended beyond Malachi's historical context, reaching into the future and echoing through generations. The promise of a Messiah forms a continuous thread in the biblical narrative, culminating in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. He appears as the one who fulfills these prophecies, bringing not only redemption, but also a renewed understanding of God's covenant with His people. Jesus' arrival did not come in a context of earthly royalty or political power, but in humility and service, showing that God's love and grace are the true essence of salvation. 
Furthermore, Malachi's prophetic mention of the coming Messiah reflects the depth of God's commitment to restore communion with humanity. Throughout the prophetic books, the message of hope persists, even in times of judgment. The Israelites, despite their awareness of their faults and sins, were constantly reminded that God would not abandon them. He was, and still is, willing to forgive and restore, provided there is a repentant heart seeking to return to Him. Malachi's message goes beyond calling the people to repentance and hope for the Messiah's arrival. It also includes a solemn warning about God's justice and judgment. In speaking of the coming of the Lord, Malachi poses a piercing question. Who can endure the day of His coming? Malachi 3.2 The Lord's coming is depicted as an event of great magnitude, not only bringing hope, but also requiring serious preparation and a return to justice. The prophet uses the metaphor of a refiner's fire to describe the process of purification and refinement that will occur when the Lord appears. Fire, with its power to purify and remove impurities, symbolizes God's action in refining His people, transforming their lives and hearts. Just as a refiner subjects silver or gold to intense heat to remove all impurities, God intends to perform a similar work within His people. This image emphasizes that true worship and a relationship with God cannot be superficial. They require a purified and devoted heart. At the same time, the reference to the refiner's fire serves as a warning about the consequences of sin and injustice. Malachi directly addresses the unjust practices permeating society, highlighting sorcery, adultery and oppression as actions that will not be tolerated. These injustices were not merely individual transgressions, but also reflected a deterioration of the morals and values meant to characterize the community of Israel. The people were straying from the principles God had established, engaging in practices that corrupted the integrity of their worship. Malachi does not shy away from confronting these behaviors. In condemning sorcery, he opposes the pursuit of power and knowledge outside divine wisdom, a practice that corrupted the people's relationship with God. The reference to adultery symbolizes unfaithfulness not only in marital relationships, but also in Israel's relationship with God, which is frequently depicted as a covenant of marriage in Scripture. Thus, adultery becomes a metaphor for the spiritual infidelity of the people toward their Creator. Oppression, in turn, exposes the social injustice prevalent among the most vulnerable, revealing a lack of compassion and disregard for those less fortunate. God condemns these practices not just as individual transgressions, but as a clear sign of society's failure to uphold justice and mercy. Amid this scenario, the coming of the Lord promises to be a day of severe judgment. Malachi makes an appeal to the collective conscience of the people, reminding them that God's presence brings not only comfort and hope, but also a demand for holiness and justice. The day of the Lord's coming is presented as a time when true worshippers will be distinguished from those who have surrendered to sin and corruption. The purification of God's people is an essential step in restoring communion and genuine worship, which must be marked by integrity and justice. Another striking prophecy concerns the issue of robbing God. As presented by Malachi, this represents one of the most direct and impactful accusations in Scripture. By asking, Will a man rob God? Malachi 3.8 Malachi confronts the people of Israel with a disturbing revelation. Their lack of commitment to fulfilling the obligations God had established, particularly concerning tithes and offerings. This question is not merely a passing remark, it is a call for deep reflection on the people's relationship with their Creator and the consequences of their disobedience. Malachi was not referring to theft in a literal sense, 
but to a violation of the trust and covenant that existed between God and his people. The practice of tithing, which required a portion of the harvest and livestock to be dedicated to God, had a clear purpose, to sustain the temple, the priests, and communal life in Israel. However, the people had neglected this responsibility, choosing to withhold what was due to God. This refusal to contribute to the spiritual well-being of the community indicated not only a lack of interest in worship, but also a lack of gratitude for what God had done in their lives. The consequences of this disobedience were tangible, affecting the everyday life of the Israelite community. The failure to bring adequate tithes and offerings led to a weakening of both spiritual and social vitality. The lack of resources to sustain the temple resulted in a disassembled form of worship where religious practices became superficial and empty. By straying from obedience to God, the people also distanced themselves from the communion and spiritual support that this practice provided. Social injustices and conflicts became more pronounced, as neglecting to honor God was linked to a lack of love and respect among the Israelites themselves. Malachi makes a clear and urgent appeal for obedience. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, Malachi 3.10. This exhortation is more than a request. It is an invitation to action that could reverse the discouraging situation the people faced. The prophet emphasizes the importance of a total and sincere devotion that goes beyond mere formality. By urging the people to bring the whole tithe, Malachi highlights the need not only to fulfill this obligation, but to do so with a genuinely grateful and willing heart. Moreover, Malachi offers a powerful promise alongside this appeal. He challenges the people to test God's faithfulness, promising that if they fulfill their financial obligations, God will open the windows of heaven and pour out abundant blessings upon them. This promise of divine provision is not only an incentive to do what is right, but also a testimony to God's generosity and care for those who honor him. The invitation to test God in this regard is a call to faith and trust in his promises, encouraging the people to commit not only to what is required, but to experience God's goodness in their lives. Amid warnings, there were also messages of promised restoration. In the midst of the discouragement and corruption permeating Israel, Malachi brings a message of hope, emphasizing the blessings and prosperity God promised in return for obedience. This promise was not only aimed at individual restoration, but had a profound collective impact on the entire community. Through Malachi, God makes it clear that fulfilling his ordinances and dedicating oneself to what is sacred are not merely duties, but a path to prosperity. By stating, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, Malachi 3.10, God is not only calling the people to repentance, but also promising that, if they obey, he will open the windows of heaven and pour out abundant blessings upon them. This promise is radical, as it encompasses not only spiritual blessings, but also a genuine transformation in the people's life circumstances. The blessings promised by God in response to obedience have a tangible effect on the community's daily life. When the people turn to God, honoring His commandments and generously contributing with their tithes and offerings, it creates an environment of abundance and provision. Financial hardships and challenges that once seemed insurmountable begin to be reversed. The fields, which may have been barren due to disobedience and spiritual neglect, now flourish, yielding an abundant harvest that ensures food security and prosperity for all. This promised prosperity is not merely about material wealth, but serves as a testament to God's faithfulness. The blessings manifest in various forms, such as the restoration of peace and harmony among people, the elimination of injustices, and the restoration of social order. When God's people align with his principles, a ripple effect permeates the entire community, promoting justice and mercy among individuals. Thus, obedience benefits not only those who practice it, but also has a positive impact on all those around them. 
Furthermore, Malachi's message emphasizes that this restoration and prosperity play a significant role in Israel's witness to the nations. The declaration that all nations will call you blessed, Malachi 3.12, reveals that Israel's testimony was not meant to be self-contained, but had implications that crossed borders. When Israel lives according to God's standards and experiences His blessings, it serves as a beacon to other nations. The prosperity and justice that emerge from obedience become a visible testimony of God's greatness and goodness, drawing others to know and worship the Lord. This promise of being called blessed by the nations highlights Israel's role as a light to the Gentiles. God's people are called to be a model of faithfulness and justice, reflecting His divine character in their daily interactions and practices. Thus, the promised restoration extends beyond the individual. It is a collective calling, where each member of the community has the opportunity to be a channel of blessings that glorify God and draw others to Him. The theme of future expectations in Malachi is one of the richest and most hopeful parts of his message. He not only presents the harsh reality of divine judgment, but also offers a glimpse of what is to come, a time when God's justice will be established and his people will experience true salvation. The prophet speaks of the day of the Lord, a time when justice will finally be served and the righteous will be distinguished from the wicked. Malachi 4.1 declares, The day is coming, it will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. This day of judgment is vividly described, illustrating the severity with which God will address injustice and disobedience. The contrast between the righteous and the wicked is clear. While those who remain faithful and obedient to God will be preserved, those who have surrendered to sin will face the consequences of their choices. This distinction is central to Malachi's message, emphasizing that faithfulness to God not only brings blessings in this life, but also promises of salvation in the future. In the midst of this day of judgment, the sun of righteousness will rise. Malachi 4.2 this powerful metaphor of the sun represents not only the light and truth that will dispel the darkness of injustice, but also the hope and salvation God promises His people. The sun of righteousness symbolizes the Messiah, who would bring redemption and restore the relationship between God and humanity. This image is rich in meaning, evoking healing and liberation. The righteous, those who fear the Lord, will go out and leap like calves released from the stall, a portrayal of the joy and freedom that accompany salvation. Malachi's promises, then, are not merely vague hopes, but a clear affirmation of God's intent to restore His people. These promises do not end on the pages of the Old Testament, but find fulfillment in the New Testament with the coming of Jesus Christ. He is the Son of Righteousness, the one who brings light to the darkness and offers salvation to all who believe. Jesus' ministry, His death, resurrection, and the gift of grace are the realization of the expectations and promises that began to be outlined in Malachi. Reflecting on how God's promises are fulfilled in the New Testament, we see that Christ's coming is a fundamental turning point in salvation history. He not only fulfilled Old Testament prophecies, but also broadened the reach of salvation, offering it not only to Israel, but to all nations. The gospel becomes the manifestation of the Son of Righteousness, bringing not only forgiveness, but also new life and purpose for all who accept Him. In light of this, the future expectations described by Malachi invite us to contemplate our own position with God. They encourage us to live in obedience, confident that God's justice will prevail. The day of the Lord, though a time of judgment, is also a moment of hope for those who remain faithful. For the righteous, it is a day of celebration, liberation, and joy, while for the wicked, it is a call to reflection and repentance. Malachi's message, though written thousands of years ago, 
has enduring relevance that deeply resonates with the spiritual condition of the contemporary church. Throughout his prophecies, Malachi raises crucial questions about the spiritual apathy that had infiltrated the people of Israel, a problem that persists in many faith communities today. The prophets call for a re-evaluation of religious practices and relationship with God serves as an invitation for modern Christians to engage in an honest reflection on their own spiritual lives. Avoiding spiritual apathy begins with recognizing the importance of a living and dynamic relationship with God. Just as Malachi warned his people about the superficiality of their offerings and their disregard for worship, contemporary churches are called to avoid the temptation of settling into empty religious routines. Attending services without a genuinely engaged heart can lead to a state of complacency. Therefore, it is essential for individuals to strive to cultivate a faith that not only fulfills obligations, but also seeks a profound encounter with the Creator. This can be achieved through sincere prayer, studying scripture, and active involvement in community life. Personal reflection is a fundamental part of this process. Christians are invited to re-evaluate their offerings and devotions to God, not only in financial terms, but in all areas of their lives. What does it mean to give God the best of ourselves? How can we honor God with our talents, time, and resources? These questions should be pondered by every member of the church. Malachi reminds us that God does not desire offerings that are left over or irrelevant. He longs for hearts willing to serve and sacrifice. This reflection can translate into practical actions, such as involvement in ministries. Malachi's concluding message also brings profound hope, revealing the promise that God does not change and is always willing to restore. In a world where uncertainty and change are constant, this truth serves as an anchor for those who seek God. God's faithfulness is a powerful reminder that regardless of our failings and tendency toward apathy, He is always ready to welcome back those who repent. The promise of restoration that permeates Malachi's words is an open invitation for all to return to the path of obedience, where true spiritual life and God's blessings are found. For the contemporary church, this means there is always an opportunity for a fresh start to turn to God with a sincere heart. No matter how far someone has strayed or how disinterested they may have become, the possibility of renewal and restoration is ever-present. Malachi's experience invites every Christian to examine their own lives and seek a genuine return to worship that honors God in order to experience the transformations that come with this reconnection. By applying these lessons to our lives today, we can not only avoid spiritual apathy, but also become agents of change and blessing, reflecting the light of Christ in a world that longs for hope and redemption. And so we come to the end of another video, exploring the profound lessons and messages of the prophet Malachi. We hope you felt inspired and challenged to reflect on your own spiritual life and God's call to obedience. If you enjoyed this content and would like to continue receiving more teachings that deepen your understanding of the Bible, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. Take care and may God bless you.